beginning our journey now with Azure ARM VMs and deploying workloads on them, it's time to begin module 2.1, and this is a pretty big module. The beginning will give you a good VMs overview, which we've separated out into multiple parts. Part one, including introduction to virtual machines, VM types, and VM specializations. Then we have part two. This includes Azure compute units, so you can learn how to size up your VMs, as well as OS reference documentation. And then we move on to VMs part three. Part three includes all the Windows Server support and Linux supported distributions that you need to know about for the exam. Moving on to part four, we then include the regional limitations that you need to be aware of, as well as restricted usernames. And finally, we move on to some demos. Demo one, deploying Azure VM from the Azure portal. Demo two then, deploying Azure VM via PowerShell. Demo three, connect into your Azure Windows VM. Demo four then, connect into your Azure Linux VM. Finally, we move on to another lecture on VM images and a demo then on creating your own Windows VM image. So stick with us as there's a lot to unpack in this module. Right, with all those intros out of the way, let's dive straight into the meat now. And let's just take an introduction to virtual machines. For anybody that's not familiar with virtual machines, it helps to just think about how your computer operates, right? So you have some hardware, you have CPU, memory, and disk. And on top of that, you have your operating system. So this could be Microsoft Windows, could be Mac OS. And on top of that, we obviously have our applications that we install. Well, along came virtualization many years ago now. Uh, and the concept is still very similar. We still have our hardware, so we still have to run our applications somewhere. And we have our CPU, memory, and disk. But we install something in between, which is the hypervisor. And on top of the hypervisor can live multiple operating systems with multiple applications. So instead of just running one operating system that may only get used you know, 10% of the time, we can run multiple operating systems, make much more use out of that CPU, memory, and disk. And every single one of these is essentially our virtual machine. And when we're in Azure, we're basically doing the same thing. We don't manage the hypervisor on premises. You would typically manage something like VMware ESXi or Microsoft Hyper-V. But in the public cloud, Microsoft presents us with a whole bunch of options for provisioning our virtual machines. And, and that leads us onto a really, really cool thing, which is all of the VM types available to us. Typically on premises, we would have you know one or maybe two different variations of hosts, and every time Intel releases a new CPU, we would upgrade those hosts. But in the public cloud, because you know just the scale that they have, uh, you have multiple choices available to you. So if we go through these, it's very important to understand and select the right instance type for your workload. Uh, the A series were the very first series that Microsoft introduced. They're divided up into basic and standard. So standard are actually our general purpose VMs. And then there's a basic version of the A series for testing and development. Then we get on to B, which I, I remember as B for burstable. Uh, these instances can burst to the full capacity of the CPU when needed, but you get a discount because you're not using the machine a lot of the time. So it's storing CPU credits, and then when it has to consume CPU, it can use those credits and you know use the full capacity of the CPU. Now, if you're going to use the CPU continuously, it's obviously not going to make sense because you're not going to store any credits and you're going to get worse performance, but a very cost-effective option then. I highly encourage you know people to use them during some of the labs and things as well. Uh, D is the general purpose ones. You'll see a lot of these around in the enterprise. And then we have memory optimized. These are the E series. You'll see there's some other memory optimized ones out there. This is the newest memory optimized series they, they brought out recently. This is a high memory to CPU core ratio. Then we go into the F series immediately after memory optimized is, C, is CPU optimized. And this is the reverse. So we have a high CPU core to memory ratio and so it's kind of the opposite of the E series there. The G series, you know, Microsoft calls us the Godzilla, at least that's what, what people tell me when I'm walking around, you know, Microsoft Ignite in various conferences. Very large instances, you know, hence the Godzilla name there for large databases, big uh, big data use cases. Then we got high performance compute, you know, computational, molecular modeling, scientific applications, that's the H series. The L series is for storage. I remember this as L for LUN, like in the traditional sense of storage. Uh, and these are, you know, storage optimized with a high disk throughput and high I.O. Then we got the M series, another very large memory uh, series available. These go actually much, much larger than the E series. You know, you can go up to 3.5 terabytes of RAM here. Then we have the N series. They're actually divided up into NV and NC. 
depending on the, the type you choose there and what, what configuration you require. But these are graphics card um, enabled instances. And finally, we have SAP HANA on Azure certified instances as well. So as you can see, just, just a ton to choose from that. And then we go into the specialization. So if you just got your head around, okay, I've got all these types. Well, now there's different specializations and you notice this in the way the instance types are written out. So for example, we've got S for premium storage. So if you see D series, you'll also see a DS version. So DSV2, that's a premium storage option there. We have the M specialization as well. That's for larger memory of a configuration uh, type. So if, for example, we've got a standard A2, then you might see a standard A2M that just has more memory. Uh, and then the final one we have R, which is supports remote direct memory access, also known as RDMA. And you'll see that by things like H16MR as well.